In 1994, one of the biggest tragedies in human history took place in Rwanda, a small country located in East Africa. Triggered by the long suppressed conflicts between the ethnic groups of Hutus and Tutsis, 800,000 people were murdered in the span of 100 days. Neighbors killed neighbors, brothers killed sisters, husband killed wife. 25 years later, in the summer of 2018, a group of Jewish school students traveled to Rwanda what we saw was not the nation of hatred and disaster, but a country full of love, friendship, and peace. So I think that one of the reasons why Rwanda was um, able to turn from such a horrific event to a more peaceful country was um, the emphasis on forgiveness in the country, like after the genocide. I think that can be shown through today. Like when we went to Rwanda, people never spoke about whether they were Hutu or Tutsi. That was, that wasn't even spoken about in like daily interaction because the past was in the past and it was um, time to move on toward the future and move on towards building a new country and um, building new relationships with the people. Through the genocide that they went through, um, the years after they've shown active empathy and uh, while we were participating in different activities and while we were interacting with many different people, it was evident that they all had empathy and they were all very understanding and while we were doing service, if we had any problems or if like the group was a little stressed, the Rwandans were always the most empathetic and understanding. You know, we speak English, They most of them didn't speak English, you know, we have different skin tones, we have different ways of living you know, different, everything, everything about it was different. But it was cool because regardless of all those divides, like we were still able to have contact with them. And not only that, but like, it felt very pure. And it was just like the epitome of human interaction for me because like, when we were just with those kids, for example, at the Children's Peace Library, there was like nothing better than that. Like, even if we were just playing games or just picking them up or drawing with them, it was like, we still knew exactly what the other were feeling, whether that be through facial expression or sounds or emotion or just our actions. It was amazing because it just kind of shows you that, you know, our similarities are greater than our differences, no matter what we look like or where we're from. It teaches us that we should be forgiving no matter what. Um, and I think that's something that we don't really have in this country. People hold grudges, um, especially with the divide between black people and white people. You can see in today, um, just with the prejudice that, that's had against black men, the divide is, is so large. And I guess one would say that we're in a, in a more developed country, but I don't, I don't think we are in terms of humanity, in terms of like what it is to be a forgiving person at all. Um, I think that we're actually behind, and that's because of the grudge that's happened so long ago. The emphasis on the community that we saw in Rwanda was really interesting, as opposed to here in the United States. Um, they worked really hard together in order to achieve an overall goal together, as opposed to here that may be different because they're more competitive, but I think that's something that we can really learn. They no longer take anything for granted, and they don't take their relationships or their families for granted. They don't take their education and um, different languages for granted because they've all seen it taken away within the span of 100 days. Um, and so they value their happiness, and I think that's something that we often take for granted in the States and in many other parts of the world is that we take for granted the ability to be happy and the ability to wake up and live in a safe community. Every um, time you look in the mirror and you see your skin color and you have to think about the divide between black and white, am I a black man in America? always has to think about how he is a black man in America. There's that American aspect of him that he's, he's trying to embody. And then there's this, there's this fear that hangs over him that his, his skin color will somehow get in the way of him being a human and being treated with decent human rights. Having this experience of a different um, culture and community gave me a better understanding of the world, especially when it comes to resolving issues and being more accepting and forgiving of the past and conflicts that I may have in my life. Although we can see how peaceful and beautiful Rwanda can be, it is still a developing country with high rates of poverty. Regardless of that, I really observed how people were happy and were lively, and it goes to show how happiness is not about what you have. I think before I went to Rwanda, um, I had lots of preconceived ideas of what it would be like, considering the fact that the genocide was happened so soon before but when I arrived, it was hard for me to imagine Rwanda's tragic past being only 25 years ago. As the people were so friendly to me and 
we encountered some people who were welcoming of us and our culture and willing to show us their life in Rwanda, but also because the landscape was so raw and untouched and so beautiful along with all of the different species of animals that we saw, especially on the safari. But if we can just for once put aside our little differences and you know, I was raised in the South or the North or I believe in this or that and just say, you know, we are all here to do the same thing as to live, prosper, be happy and show love. Because no one wants war, no one wants bloodshed is that we're all here to do the same thing. So if we can just realize that and work together and realize, you know, one person doesn't deserve better than another. And I think we all realize that if we all just feel a little bit of empathy. If we can just do that and forget about what makes us different, focus on how we are similar and how we all deserve the same thing, you know, we can probably get to a place like Rwanda has.